Imagine a world where truth is buried beneath layers of deception, where the corridors of power echo with whispers and secrets. Now, think back to that first time you found yourself immersed in the 1976 cinematic masterpiece, All the President's Men. Do you recall the electric anticipation as the opening scenes unfolded, drawing you into the heart of investigative journalism? Or perhaps it was the palpable chemistry between Robert Redford and Dustin Hoffman portraying the relentless journalists who dared to challenge the status quo. Maybe a specific line echoed in your mind long after the credits rolled, a line that resonated with the truth seeker in you. But let's not get lost in the memories just yet. Today, let's dive deeper into the enigma that is all the president's men and unearth some lesser known nuggets about its creation and impact. From the covert meetings in smoky newsrooms to the high-stakes cat and mouse game played with sources, this film encapsulated the tense atmosphere of unraveling one of the most notorious political scandals in history. So, fasten your seatbelts as we embark on a journey through time, reliving the essence of the 1976 classic that continues to captivate minds to this day. But first, let's peel back the layers and reveal some intriguing behind-the-scenes facts that even the most dedicated fans might not be privy to. These anecdotes will paint a richer picture of the dedication and passion poured into bringing this story to life. Get ready to uncover the secrets, the struggles, and the triumphs that culminated in a cinematic experience unlike any other. So, without further ado, let's shine a spotlight on these hidden gems and shine a new light on all the President's men. After all, every story has its untold chapters, waiting to be explored. And in the end, you might just find yourself transported back to that moment when you first encountered the film's allure, a moment that left an indelible mark on your cinematic journey. Now, with the stage set, let's delve into these fascinating tidbits about All the President's Men, a film that ignited curiosity, inspired integrity, and immortalized the pursuit of truth. And remember, the past has a way of illuminating the present, making us reflect on our roles as seekers of truth in a world of shadows. In the annals of cinematic history, Alan J. Pakula's 1976 masterpiece All the President's Men stands as a quintessential political thriller that unravels the enigma of the Watergate scandal. However, behind the scenes, a clash of creative minds simmered. According to Adventures in the Screen Trade, a work penned by William Goldman himself, Pacula's unrelenting quest for perfection exasperated Goldman. Then incessant plea for rewrites, underscored by Pacula's refrain of don't deny me any riches, was a source of vexation for the esteemed screenwriter. Goldman, in candid retrospect, expressed a sentiment of reluctance. He mused that, if he could rewind his career, he might cautiously sidestep the intricate web of this very film that would etch his name into its annals. Amidst the unfolding drama on screen, a subtle nod to reality was deftly woven. Robert Redford, who portrayed journalist Bob Woodward, dialed a number that resonated beyond fiction's grasp. The digits he pressed 202-456-1414 belonged not to an orchestrated set, but to the heart of power itself, the White House switchboard. This audacious inclusion was a nod to veracity that blurred the lines between real and reality, emblematic of the film's commitment to authenticity. Yet, casting choices have a way of shaping cinematic destinies. In the case of all the President's men, Robert Redford's first choice to embody the role of Carl Bernstein was none other than the iconic Al Pacino. A path diverged, and Redford ultimately partnered with Dustin Hoffman, and their on-screen synergy became legendary. In the captivating tapestry of Hollywood history, All the President's Men continues to cast its intrigue, not merely for the tale it weaves, but for the tales hidden behind its creation. The clash of wills between Pacula and Goldman, the ephemeral bridge to reality via a phone number, and the paths not taken in casting all contribute to the layers that enrich its legacy. In celluloid and behind the curtain, All the President's Men remains a mosaic of untold stories that continue to echo through time. Unveiling all the President's men, the symphonic typewriter, and Redford's guidance in the gripping opening scenes of the 1976 film All the President's Men, the cacophony of typewriter hammers striking paper was a mere happenstance. Layering the sounds of gunshots and whiplashes over the rhythmic clatter of a typewriter, 
the film's creators ingeniously underscored the notion that words can be as powerful as weapons. This auditory strategy resonated throughout the film, mirroring the investigative battle waged by journalists Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein to uncover the Watergate scandal. And as the credits rolled, the film brought this motif full circle. The closing scene, wherein teletypewriters churned out headlines, merged the staccato of typewriter keys with the distant echoes of cannon fire from a 21-gun salute. This juxtaposition seamlessly blended the urgency of journalistic endeavor with the solemnity of national events. Delving into the film's genesis, it's revealed that actors Dustin Hoffman and Robert Redford, who portrayed the investigative duo, delved deep into their roles. They immersed themselves in the newsroom ambience of the Washington Post for months, attending news conferences and absorbing the tenacious atmosphere that fueled Woodward and Bernstein's pursuit of truth. Interestingly, Redford's involvement with the film extended beyond his on-screen performance. A Vanity Fair article from April 2011 reveals that even before Woodward and Bernstein's book was complete, Redford maintained communication with them. He steered their focus toward the inner workings of their investigation, urging them to spotlight their methodology over the unfolding events they were reporting. This insight lent a layer of authenticity to the film, as Redford's guidance helped shape the portrayal of journalistic dedication and rigor. All the President's Men isn't just a cinematic exploration of a historical scandal, it's a layered symphony of sound, a testament to method acting, and a collaborative endeavor that bridged the gap between reality and real. As its legacy endures, the film stands as a timeless reminder of the power of words and the unyielding pursuit of truth. Jason Robards J.R. S. Back-to-Back -back Oscars for real-life portrayals Jason Robards J.R., acclaimed for his compelling performances, achieved a remarkable feat with his Back-to-Back -back Academy Award wins for Best Actor in a Supporting Role. His triumphs weren't just about his acting prowess, but also his knack for portraying real-life figures. In 1,976 seconds All the President's Men, Robards captivated audiences as Ben Bradley, the resolute executive editor of the Washington Post. Robards imbued Bradley with gravitas, echoing his role in guiding the Post's investigation into the Watergate scandal, which shook the foundations of American democracy. This portrayal, capturing the essence of Bradley's unwavering commitment to journalistic integrity, earned Robards his first Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. However, Robards was far from done. The following year, he took home the same accolade for his role in Julia, where he brought to life writer Dashiell Hammett. This impressive consecutive win cemented Robards as a masterful interpreter of real-life characters, showcasing his versatility and ability to embody the spirit of historical figures. Robards' dual triumphs not only celebrated his acting finesse, but also highlighted his dedication to portraying the nuances of individuals who left an indelible mark on history. His achievements remain a testament to the power of storytelling in bridging the gap between past and present. In a clever move to ensure equitable billing for its superstar leads, the 1976 film All the President's Men employed a strategy that has seen the light before. To tackle the issue of top billing, the film's marketing genius decided to list Robert Redford's name above Dustin Hoffman's on posters and trailers, while within the film itself, Hoffman's name took precedence over Redford's. This balancing act of marquee names mirrors the approach previously witnessed in The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance back in 1962, where the pairing of Hollywood legends John Wayne and James Stewart underwent a similar billing arrangement. However, the behind-the-scenes innovations extended beyond billing politics. Cinematographer Gordon Willis, known for his distinct visual style, introduced a unique tool to his craft. A customized split diopter sliding mechanism was ingeniously affixed to Willis' camera. This apparatus allowed seamless in and out movement during shots sparing the need for jarring editing cuts. This technical innovation elevated the film's visual storytelling, creating a fluid narrative experience for the audience. Not to be outshone, the musical score of All the President's Men also carries its own strategic placement. Composed by David Shire, the score's first notes resonate with viewers approximately 28 minutes into the film. This calculated timing subtly underlines key plot developments and narrative shifts, enhancing the tension and impact of the unfolding events. The film's intertwining of strategic billing, technical cinematography, 
and musical score serves as a testament to the intricate craftsmanship behind the scenes of all the President's men. These elements converge to create a cinematic experience that goes beyond the surface, drawing audiences into a world of investigative journalism, political intrigue, and meticulous storytelling. In the realm of filmmaking, it's the concealed details that often wield the greatest influence, as witnessed in the careful choreography of all the President's men. As we bid adieu to this cinematic journey through the labyrinthine corridors of power, I implore you to pause, dear reader, and let the essence of all the President's men linger in your mind's eye. Just as Woodward and Bernstein relentlessly pursued the truth, let us now turn the spotlight inward, exploring our own narratives interwoven with this tale of journalistic valor. Have you ever found yourself lost in the shadowy interplay between information and influence? Have you, too, stood at the precipice of revelation, driven by an unyielding thirst for justice? All the President's men beckons us to peer beyond the surface, to question, and to challenge, reminding us that the search for truth is often as elusive as it is essential. Perhaps it's the echo of typewriter keys tapping in a newsroom, or the tension of clandestine meetings that lingers in your mind. Or maybe it's the unwavering camaraderie of Woodward and Bernstein that resonates, a reminder of the power of collaboration in the face of insurmountable odds. As we reflect on this masterpiece, let us delve into our memories and uncover the moments that have imprinted themselves upon our souls. So, I extend an invitation, a call to share your thoughts, your memories, your connection with all the President's men. Whether you scribble them in the margins of a notebook or share them in hushed conversations, let your voice join the chorus of those who have been moved by this cinematic triumph. And as we conclude this contemplative interlude, I extend my gratitude for your time, your curiosity, and your willingness to explore the intricate web of human nature and power. Until we embark on our next intellectual rendezvous, remember that the stories we engage with are not merely tales on a screen. They become threads that weave the tapestry of our own lives. Yours in cinematic reverie.